I had to clap. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's Victor Allen's new new sports, written, directed, and produced by the ball-headed black man, Victor Allen, the man that the ladies have nicknamed Sexual Chocolate. That's right. You can find it here. And ladies and gentlemen, here he is, the ball-headed black man, he I like that picture. Victor! You see that? You see how he does that picture? Yeah, that's, that was something? he angry? <laughs> that, 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 you know, I had, um, I had a moment where I was beat down by a, a, a woman who basically said I, I left her hanging. So I was just caught Tying him moment. up in the closet I again, huh? had a moment. So was yeah, was there, a reason, that. Is there a reason that he had his hands like that? That's kind of cool. <laughs> you know, it was, just, it was just one of those Victor poses. Huh? Yeah, yeah. I like it. No, yeah, I like it. I'm trying, man. I'm learning. That's why I use it. I just think it's, a, it, it's an interesting picture. Yeah, I it's, like one it. of, it's one of the most unique ones, but I, like I said, you never want to choose your own picture. Somebody no. else has to choose it for you. No, or that was your there. picture. Hey, you guys. That's a picture that deals with football. Before I even get into the RG3 scenario, I got to ask a question. Because I didn't know about a particular uh, historical fact relating to top, to top sports going back some decades about the top sports. And I said early in the show there was horse racing, boxing, and uh, baseball. So Mario and I, we always talk about the stage of football where things are going to change and evolve the game. So it's a little bit, because of liability, health, and all that, it's going to be a, a softer sport in many ways. Because that's a big complaint and that's ongoing right now. So instead of getting into that, because we philosophically go into it all day long, I said, well, wait a minute. Some sports just don't stay on top all the time. Well, if football is going to change, they may remain <clears throat> on top. The other sports did not change. Horse racing has been horse racing. They haven't put the faces to it, the media. And, and the same with boxing. It had its moments. They say probably from the flagrancy of the promoters probably kind of put them in a dire strait. Well, Will football be our number one sport continuously for at least the next 10 or 20 years? No. Uh, no. Uh, okay. No. All right. Go, no. go, go ahead, Tyrone. Well, what I was going to say is the one reason why football is and boxing were always at the top because people like the combat. They like the combat of nature. In my mind, what I've noticed that's slowly creeping in and taking over is the UFC stuff. Right. That's what I've noticed. Yes. It's big. Yeah, UFC is taking over. Well, their days are numbered for the same reason. Same reason. They're going to run into the you know, same the, issue. I brought up, you know, boxing where the goal is to give the other guy a concussion. Right. Yeah. And the UFC is the same. When your goal is to knock someone out, you're basically attempting to give them a concussion. There's no way OSHA and all the other agencies that now have to pay attention to workplace injuries are going to allow you to have a sport that's deadly. Well, they're not. Well, I think the I think the biggest aspect of that is people eventually they just want to see somebody. They want to see the the contact. You know, baseball's waning and and golf and some of these other things are niches. But I think the the issue is people want to see a combative nature between people, which is the reason why Hunger Games. So yeah, that's kind of true. <laughs> but true. you know what? I I think they're going to end up putting everybody in armor, but because you have to do something where at least you can document. That is not de well, not deadly. Well, here's right. what's unique. You know, in particularly Victor in football, I think for a long time we were all okay with it until we start seeing our heroes going down. Right. You know, I, I I just heard this one with Tony Dorsett a few days oh, ago yeah, with him. Yeah, I, yeah. I mean, yeah. we heard, and then Brett Favre was saying he couldn't remember being at the the right. game, and and God knows everybody loved Junior Seau and he shot himself. And I right. mean, people. It's it's becoming like everybody's finally going. Wait a minute, maybe they've got something here. Maybe something's wrong. I mean, these were people that we all grew up with that we that we loved, True. and now all of a sudden, they're you know. Fifteen we years it. ago, Tyrone, they didn't know. They actually thought didn't think that concussions had long time effects. Right. right. No one thought that. Uh, People would just wait, you know, shake it off and go back and play. Mm -hmm. Now, like a lot of things, you have data that comes out that says not only are there effects, there are long lasting effects, maybe from even the first one. Sure, sure. So, no, yeah. it's interesting because PMC says no way football is going out slowly. I give them credit because they're getting ahead of the game because I think they're not thinking of the current generation as it relates to where we came from in viewing football because it was just unleashed. Yeah. Pain, pain, pain. They're investing in going, when we get past this period, where, and I agree with you, Mario, that they're going, to, they're going to institute something to protect them. It's like NASCAR and what they've done. A brilliant job to me. And what they've done, 
and protecting those drivers going over 200 miles an hour, hitting the walls, flipping and everything for the most part. They've done a great job, and, but, and it's going to and improve. Football's going that way. It's about cost. And Who's remember, going to absorb remember the cost too, that these are areas that are new, which means that they're writing their own standards. Right. They do that because it's politically expedient. It's illegally expedient, too. Some, at some point in time, the law often catches up and said, you know those standards that you wrote for yourself? Mm -hmm. Well, they're not good enough. But so. you know what's interesting is when you lose your biggest stars, you, you mentioned um, NASCAR, mm -hmm. but they, they didn't institute a lot of that until they lost Earnhardt. That's right. And then, and then all of a sudden, you know, hey, it meant something. In football... It's going to start doing the same thing. So eventually, it's, it it'll eventually, it always kind of turns itself around. It's like it'll eventually evolve. And I think football is evolving. And a lot of the people who are probably listening now, particularly in their early 20s and, and 30s and stuff, don't know the, the history of the game where there wasn't a lot of protection. And there, there was no such thing as protecting the quarterback years ago. True. No such thing. You know yeah. what, you guys? I think you get a feel for how big this could be when you realize that the NFL did a settlement that was essentially billions of dollars. Yeah, my trainer. Yeah. Uh, NFL player. Right, and if they right. settle for billions, you know no, what that more. meant, what was at risk, yeah. right? Yes. Because literally it was known. You have a number of folks, each of whom would get million dollar settlements against you as their employer, putting them in harm's way. Right. Which yeah. leads me to the ones. You guys, see, I want you guys to know, I didn't tell you about what new news sports is. It's, I'm a fan reporter, so I don't have to know anything about sports. They do, though. Because these are the experts. Look at them carefully. Uh, I, bro, maybe Tyrone. <laughs> I, had a, I had a Jerry Curl when I was playing my league. <laughs> I slept at a Holiday Inn. <laughs> so, this no, is what I'm saying. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I had a Jerry Curl <laughs> when I was playing. Okay. But $400 That's a week. True. $10, you know, $400 a week is what I made in minor leagues. Now, good question, PMC. Wow. You said, uh, I wonder what waiver clause new players are coming into the league are being forced to sign. No doesn't make said, any difference. You can't waive forced. those. I know. He said forced. See, the good thing about the law is that you can't <clears throat> get people to waive these kinds. You can, in other words, right. I can't say, I'm going to start a show tomorrow that's gladiators. Everybody gets swords and the loser dies. Sign a waiver. No, that doesn't absolve you. No, it's not going to do it. That's you can't write contracts that go against the law. Look, no. ultimately, to be fair, if every single one of us, to be fair, I mean, even those, if we were able to make money doing this and if you had the chance Mario or you nose had the chance picking. Victor you know <laughs> celebrity nose that picking would be a com that'd be a combat sport <laughs> <laughs> but, 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 we, but for years we would get bent out of shape over people who we believe was making a lot of money right. but the truth of the matter is somebody's paying it right. so you're paying to see that right. whether it's television whether it's right. advertisement whether it's going there personally they're not making this money without somebody paying it that's right so you know, for a long time, we would get bent out of shape over that. But the truth is, we can't get mad anymore. Not anymore over it, because somebody's... somebody's oh, no, we, we, we've embraced right. it. And when you think about the things that we did, even in the past, and the kinds of things that were sports, you recognize, again, we're a violent society. Yeah. But everything's changing. And that leads me to what you guys are going to pick. As your top sport superseding. Football, if any, or will football stay on top? Because, like I said, you got baseball. Who everybody said? I don't know. Is football on top? That NBA no, had no, more football. money. It's football. Football's on top. It's the popular sport. It I'm is gonna the look popular sport. The double. Uh, I'm gonna. I'm. I thought they had been displaced like 12 years ago. Well, I, I'll say this. Look, the reason why football is so and still on top is because it's a lot in a short span. Yep. If it went on, remember they tried to do the U.S. You yes. know the USL, right. FFL. Yep. You know you tried to make football all year round. That generally doesn't work. But if I had my druthers, I'm going to say football is going to stay around a little while. But as it evolves, we're just going to find another contact sport. Contact. I just think we're going to find another. And I think oh, Twister, I think bedroom UFC. Bedroom twister. <laughs> bedroom twister. <That's, laughs> you took your bedroom game. twister. Took you right off your moment, didn't it? Tell you. Moment. Shift is I'm going to say. I'm going to say. I'm going to say UFC is going to is going to come around for a while. You know, and I think about that as I'm I'm talking. I remember when Jerry Springer's show used to be like at the top of the game That's when right. Oprah was there, but you know what? That's it right. lasted for a while and then it went and by the way, he was my teacher in high school in Cincinnati, but I mean, he just, you know, went down. Mayor, right? <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I'm not going to comment. I like Jerry. I'm not commenting. I'm just going to leave it alone. I just, so you, <laughs> you say UFC. I think that that's a good chance whether they stay up there long. We're just trying to find out, and it's a good one, though. Yeah. Mario, number one sport, if not football, because I think of basketball. the I think basketball. I think basketball. Football. I was going to take a look because I know the, the international penetration what? has been by basketball. But you know, I love the problem, to say that word. But the problem is with basketball is that 
it used to be teams. Basketball is no longer a team; it's individuals now. That's right. And and they and in and, and the next year or Free two, agency and just, everything. I, there's I no think, such thing as a team. This is the reason what well, this is what happened to baseball. Right. In U.S. now, remember, I think the big blow up for basketball is really Asia. Right. Yeah. And, yeah. and the Middle East and but you know basketball is becoming even more than football. The right. sport that the internationally represents the United States, yeah. even more than baseball. Yeah. Baseball was the international sport. Well, but right. in China, those places like that, they know the Lakers. And That's they right. know. <laughs> and you if know. you talk from a different perspective, yes, globally, you know, soccer, number one game, nobody's even touching them. And then next would be basketball because football hasn't transferred over it a hasn't, superstar it hasn't traveled across, outside of the borders no, of the that's USA. That's why they want to go to Europe. But, but, soccer, it but soccer hasn't transformed much here in the United States either. Right. Not not culturally. Well, well, not right. not for Americans. For for those who are came cultural, from here. Right. That came from here. Right. Soccer just doesn't get it. Yeah. But football is hasn't really gotten it either on the other side of the Atlantic. I like the women's soccer. I know you do, Mario. I do. I like the women's <laughs> soccer. That last, that last thing when he kicked the, yeah. Plus, you know, look. Ask him. I am a man. Who's, who's your famous soccer player? Oh, oh, you know, uh, huh? a solo? solo. Yeah, solo. That's right. How could you have a name like that? I know. Solo. I know. Hope you know. Solo. Hope, hope solo. solo. Only uh, hope. Right. What kind of name is that? You got to be a hero. <laughs> Let me hope stop. Solo. <laughs> Let me stop. Damn. All right. Is she bad too? Dick, stop. <laughs> stop. I, 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 I want to. I absolutely have no comment. Thank you. Have you seen? I gotta. Should I go get a picture? Hope Solo. <laughs> no. No. We Big covered her. We've covered her. Latin. Let's stay on. Let's so let's stay on the point here. RG three. <laughs> RG three. Got it. This is it. It's amazing what has happened from last year to this year, and now I asked the question because he was in an interview recently about that wonderful play that he threw that interception in the uh, uh, in the last game and basically gave his reasons why it occurred for a number of reasons but really didn't point to the fact that everybody noticed on replays is there are people open so why did you throw it to where you threw it at and what they're saying is for the reasons they love RG3 because he's his own man his own opinion he's immovable he does his own thing is now probably coming to hurt him. Now, this may be all hearsay. The question I have is, they're already having players on the team. Dissension. Yes, that he needs to step up and take the responsibility. If he's the leader, be the leader. Don't say, well, they, they weren't open, or uh, they, uh, they knew what we're doing. I say, okay, I'll give you an example of somebody knowing what you're doing. How many of us knew that if we were a coach going against Shaquille O'Neal, you wouldn't know what Shaq's going to do? Dunk. He's going. He's going to do what he's going to do. So his answer about oh makes him throw the coach under the bus, like they knew our game plan. I said, well, I think most teams know the game plan. They just go look at your tape for the most part. So my question to you guys are: Is this just a blip? Because I like RG three, and I'm not going to follow the hype. I think he's just having that early first to three year moment, and then he'll come out of it like Cam did and everyone else. What do you think? You want me? You, you, you want to go, go first? You, you can go I'll go first. Let me let me tell you, I. I think part of the problem with particularly athletes are not so much of them being their own man. I think that's part of the biggest problem. They're not their own team. Right. They're their own man. So he who excuses himself usually accuses himself. <laughs> and the truth of the matter is is that he should just take ownership for the fact that he's he really should take, you know, more ownership of a team that is really following his lead. You can't walk around giving excuses to people when you lose, but want to take ownership to everything when you're when you're winning. Right. I, I don't think that's unreasonable that you would expect for him to somehow or another, you know, do what he's supposed to do. I think that's and I think that's part of the problem. Yeah. I think that's part of the problem. And you know, and in this day and age of athletes right now, it's not about team. It's about me, me, me. Right. And who has the most money? In the seventies it was the Yankees, you know, best team money could buy, oh, you can get, you know, bring all that in, and the Lakers and Celtics in the 80s, you know, right. in the 90s, it was the Patriots, took that. I mean, look, ultimately, every, we all want winners. Yes. But you got to buy a winner. Right. But seldom can you make a winner because, you know, because of what you're giving him. And how much do you want from a player in his first or second year, really the first year after injury? So, to me, part of this is the blindness of what you want the player to deliver because well, the, and the player want, over well, right. well, the player's rookie season or his first season, he oversells himself, and you right. know he oversells himself, right. and then you know, when he comes down to earth, then we think something's wrong with the player. When in earnest, he's learning this game the same way. The, a perfect example is uh, San Francisco's quarterback right now. Right, got him all the way to the Super Bowl. <laughs> guess what? This year looks like an average player. Meanwhile, Kaepernick. you got rid of Smith, and guess what Smith's doing in Kansas City? Nine and one, Mario. 
Well, you know, I think it's just a blip. I think, like you said, first of all, I think it's a total myth that locker rooms are some happy campground. They're all are full of dissension. That's the average locker room. Yeah, I agree with that. The average locker room is full of people who don't like each other. Yeah, I agree. Who right. come to work together because they have to. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, but they definitely don't like each other. Okay, that's the sure. average locker room. And the other thing is, he is just a second year player. I think they have to lo learn more to just say, I made a mistake, I made the wrong call. The other thing is, that these players today are subject to such a high level of exposure. Do you realize how much training it would take to get these people ready just to answer routine media questions? Uh, of course. They give them training, but nothing like what they would really need in order to handle the professional onslaught of media people asking you totally questions. Totally agree. That would take even if you gave them six weeks of intense training, you would someone would say, well, that's not nearly enough. Okay, that's in six, intense classroom training just to get you ready but you for know, people the, asking but you questions. But the truth is, I mean, but to be perfectly honest, one of the things working with Kim Whitley, I learned a lot. Her, it was like on-the-job training, but it was very important training because this was her brand. Her, this is her brand. It's her career. So I don't get the luxury of making those mistakes. So she would say, Tyrone, did you do this? Did you do that? Hey, you messing with my brand. You do this. And, you know, but... To the detriment of probably the person who works with me as a publicist, you know, the problem is, is that I've worked with one of the best in the business. So now I'm expecting for that person to be like the person there you that go. I've worked with. And, and in my mind, I'm, re I'm realizing it's not fair for me to believe that they can do all of that. Well, that's what I'm saying. They, and they can't. The, the problem is they get asked to perform it. And I'm going... That's a pretty good level considering where you're from, your background, and they're not teaching you this. So to me, they're at high risk. Anytime, if you were to say to RG3, what do you think your coach wants you to get out in this press conference? I bet he has no idea. Yeah, but you know I what? Bet he has no but idea. at the same they time, don't even, I've never been asked that. But you know what, Mario? Okay. What's interesting? <laughs> but at the same level, do you know how many athletes we can count on our on on ten hands of who were more in tune of getting the money more than they were the team? Totally. Some and and you know some of them didn't really care what the other athletes thought. Some of them, you know and. Some of those people are heroes. I mean, yeah, he just do what he wants to do. He's got all this swag and all of this stuff. And some of them really don't have a clue of the culture of what to do next. They're simply there for a job. Their job is to make money. That's how they and, look and the culture, I think, shifts. I remember the difference between how high school football felt and college football. And college football totally had a different feel. And so, what, so to me, one of the things that I was losing was my love for the game and my loyalty toward team because I so didn't feel it. I didn't feel it from the setup in college. I didn't feel it from the players or the coaches. So therefore, even though I came in with a high school player's enthusiasm, I lost that quickly when confronted with the reality of what college football was like. Yeah. It was almost like corporate. Yeah. So there was no and it was bonding and of you know team. What? It there was, was none corporate of that. because they were in business to make money, yeah, you exactly. and you were the people that were going to help them get it. Right. And that's how that's how it worked. Look, it's a it's a it's a sad, you know, evolution. But ultimately, the colleges, you know, what what were you offered? Just a scholarship. But they made millions of dollars that's off right. you. So the, made it. so the question is, is RG3 in a dark place? Yes or no? No, it's a normal place. Normal place? What about you, Tyrone? I'm, I'm going to say for now, he's probably in a, in, in a normal place. For now. Okay. But it's contingent upon, in my mind, if he's willing to make a change, because he's going to have to. Because as quick as they're for him, the more he loses, the quicker they'll revolt. And I'm of that thing that he's no different than anyone else, agreeing with you, Mario, and also agreeing with you, because here's the part I love about it. When you're that young and you're second year, they want to, you to act and think like adults. And when I listen to the He's media report, kid. I think of them as being the micromanagers who have nothing else to do. They don't put on no damn pass. They don't know what a hit is like. They don't know how to give a hit in most cases. Not all. Some come from a different cut. I'm sitting up and saying, I don't think anything is actually wrong for, with a guy who's saying, I'm battled back from injury. I'm trying to m leave off where we were winning, bring you back to where we were. Some of the other players are not doing it, but I'm the one that writes the story for you guys. Look, everybody wants so to be the star. Everybody yeah. wants to be it. So yeah. I see nothing wrong with you, RG3. You keep banging because Cam had the same problem, and look what he's doing now. 
And he, I said the same thing about him. I thought he was doing remarkably well all along. I, yeah. I kept going, what are the standards we're holding him to? But maturity right. gets us all where we want to be eventually. Totally. Doesn't it? I mean, totally. eventually well, hopefully, maturity will get us I remember, there. rookies used to never play. Right. Yeah. Rookie <laughs> quarterbacks never played. No. Right. I don't care how celebrated you were coming out of college. You went to the bench. But you know what? The, the problem with that now is is that we're paying them too much money from the start. That's right. You yeah. got to see can't, something. You know, you know, you want to see, you want to see it now. If Showtime. I'm paying you 50 or $60 million, or, or you could always be what Ryan Leaf did in the locker room. Don't oh, talk to yeah. me, all right? Oh. Knock it off. Oh, well, good, good, good analogy. Yeah, 16. Right. Yep. You guys are good. Guess what? This is easy. No, dis, no, uh, Nothing to squash your mind with giving a, 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 a uh, let's just say an essay. You're going to actually pick one or two people in this next question. It's going to be easy because a Heisman handicap is simple. You got three football players. You got two with controversy. That leaves one who's not getting any media coverage. And I'm going to start one, two, three. And you guys are going to say, this is the man who's going to survive at the end. And we're going to say, why? We're going to go to, of course, Johnny Manziel. You know, he's Texas A&M. Will he do a double banger? Please don't take that the wrong way. Here you go again, I'm taking it that way. I've seen the cheerleaders for Texas. I'm taking it that way. I hope he does do a double banger. I'm taking it that way. He says, please don't take it that way. I saw those yeah. cheerleaders. Have we, have we seen, you know, have we seen the evolution of Victor Allen today? You know, men, just, men in red light districts, quickies, <laughs> double bangers. Is this a coincidence? You know, I'm unrealistic keep, expectations. Yeah, yeah. I'm just, That's what I'm saying. I just want you guys to be comfortable with the English narrative because oh, you guys are my yeah. idols. You're the best at delivering the English language. Your eloquence, I've learned now to be flexible and open. Let's, let's go that over. That sounds a little weird, by the way. <laughs> There's another one. There he goes there again. Goes. I mean, there he goes I again. Have to keep my tight That's and number clothes. five right there. Tight there he goes. <laughs> yeah, we, we'll, we'll, have, we'll have a conversation with Vic. Victor. Victor needs some public. Yeah, oh, no, Victor. No, no. Something's open. Somebody put some in it. Wait a minute. We, we actually had a term back in the day. Uh, this world uh, needs an enema. Raise your hand. That's Victor Allen's There's famous Victor turn. Victor Allen's famous turn again. There he goes. And the famous he said, song. We, he's trying to get us all involved under his bus. Well, needs it. Uh, well, needs it. But Victor's got a lot of stuff going on. <laughs> I just want to keep it light, you guys. Let's keep it light. Yeah. Okay. We, okay. <laughs> we got the Johnny Manziel. That's Texas A&M. Let's go to the second one. It's easy. Jameis Winston, and he's the one that's in the news of obvious reasons. Yeah. And I'll just say this. When the attorney tells you not to say a word, I remember Shut Ben. Up. I remember Ben Roethlisberger, and he came out and said, oh, yeah, he did. "I didn't." Bam, that's it. And even though it's proved that there was an association, he came out the gate. Here's my question: Before we get to the third choice, now this is easy because this one is running up the room. Here's the thing: By next week, we're going to know if there's going to be some charges. And at that point, once that happens, you know what happens: thumbs down, right? Mari, what do you think? I just hope it's no charges. I know. I know. Right now, everybody's quiet. No one's saying anything. Let me say this. Just based on the attorney. I'm tell right you might want to tell everybody what we're talking about. Well, I'm not sure everybody well, knows. Well, it's, it's the, they won't say they see molestation charges from somebody familiar over a year ago that was a closed case by the police department. Somehow or another, it's been reopened. They say they've learned by some other evidence, but they won't say if the police department was continuing the investigation. Well, they said they had closed it. So somewhere along the way, somebody's not answering the question, well, where did the... And it is end? Florida, right? It is Florida, Or right. somebody along the way decided to open that case. Yes. Same thing, it is Florida. And yes, yeah. See, I know where Mario's going with this. Always some shit in Florida, Florida it's, I'm it's, saying. It's, it's, it's the timing. Hanging chads. It's, thank you. It's, it's one of those things where I only want to know, first of all, if there is a case where somebody has been molested, you, there's no pass on this. Secondly, secondly, the idea that it's coming up out of nowhere, they don't even tell you. They, they won't even say we opened the case or somebody reported further information. It's just complete shutdown. So right offhand, that's why you're going to be handicapped in this. Based on that information that you know right offhand, Jameis looks to be 50-50 now. Third choice, Baylor. Bryce. He just happens to be the guy that's the unknown factor because Baylor came out of nowhere. They weren't even in the top 25 and now they're the one of the undefeated Another teams. Baylor quarterback. Another right? Baylor quarterback and, and Bryce Petty. So here's my question. You're the handicappers you guys with all this happening right now. Will Baylor slip into this because he untarnished history this season because Johnny has his off the field Slipping to what? Slipping to what? Well, slipping into winning the Heisman. In other words, he may slip to win the Heisman because of the off-field. Everybody's talking about the off-field issues with Johnny Manziel and, of course, Jameis Winston. 
What do you think? I don't think that Johnny Manziel's off-field escapades hurt him with the voters at all. Very good. I, I agree with Mario in that regard, but I also know that the Heisman Trophy doesn't want to be tarnished because they've already had this problem with a man named O.J. Simpson. Yeah. And I don't yeah. care what anybody says. They're still bitter care. over that yeah, one. I don't care what nobody says. They just don't want that controversy. And I'm going to, I agree with what you said, but I wouldn't be shocked if they just Bryce got Petty a bunch it. of controversy. Yeah. <laughs> I just, they always give I it to just somebody. wouldn't be surprised if Bryce Petty gets it. I just, it makes, it almost would be the logical choice. Who are the last one? Every 10 years, they don't go 10 years without a Heisman <laughs> issue? Yeah, of some kind. Yeah, but the, this but, one is different this year. Yeah, this, this one, one seems really very bad. It's not good. It doesn't look good. It's that TV show, <laughs> Athletes in Jail. <laughs> <laughs> Every week they get this. It's easy to produce because they always got athletes in jail. Well, I'm a Cincinnati, NFL I'm a, I'm a Cincinnati Bengals fan. That's all, that's all I need to say. Uh, so you say Bryce Petty. I, I, I like what Mario said. If man, if the problem is Manziel's tarnished. No matter well, how he, but he is the he is the he's, talk of the he's tarnished. Town. Even even if he didn't do it, he's tarnished all because he beat Alabama. Yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah, roll tide. I'm roll tide. <laughs> so, uh, so I hate that. I hate that roll tide stuff. Yeah, <laughs> like yeah. America's team. I'm taking. I'm taking Johnny. I think Johnny's going to squeak through. Mario, what do you think? Yeah, I think it's Johnny. I think, I think it's Johnny. Johnny. Yeah. I, I, you know, unless something else comes up. I say, I say Johnny, but I, I just leave the door open. The for things he ends up getting accused of are trivial enough that people are now taking the attitude like, leave him alone. Right. You say he what signed some autographs? What else did he do? He's 22 years old. Wouldn't you be chasing girls and getting a drink? Who me? No, I mean that's what people are saying about you know. We, wait a minute. After all the stuff he's been saying today, <laughs> we know he would not be you know, chasing no, any he women. Be he's drink. not chasing. Well, neither do I. But I'm saying. He's not chasing any women today. No, he's chasing. Not, not with everything he's been. Oh, no, you not with go. everything he's been talking about. Well, you guys, you know, are. doors open, men, red lights. You know, he's doing, yeah, he's like, yeah, yeah, he's not. Yeah, you guys, we good. We you good guys, with you today. You see how they fly with language and they don't know me. <laughs> this has been New News Sports. I'm a fan reporter. Thanks for you guys. You guys put it down. T put it down. Mario gave it all he can. We gotta go. Mario, take me out of here, man. Ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, that's New News Sports. Victor Allen's own unique Neil Urban look at sports. Written, directed, and produced by the bald headed black man. Sexual chocolate. Sexual chocolate. That's right. Victor Allen's New News Sports. Was I supposed to say that? <laughs> you could say it. You wait a minute. Y'all don't want a guy saying that. I'm just saying. I'm, now I'm getting it's involved. It's all right. Yeah, I'm getting involved in this part. We support all our communities. Yeah, okay. Victor Allen's a recurring segment of the Morning Copy with Mario Show. Much love to our brothers in West Hollywood. He tried. There he is. There he is. This is for you. Oh, that's yeah. so cold. Yeah. Oh, this is so cold.